Hi, I hope this finds you well. So I'm just going to set a bit of a background to um, the recording of this. I'm recording this um, the day after the awful bombing of the maternity hospital and the children's hospital in Ukraine, um, which I'm sure we all found particularly distressing, um, just awful. So if you can just bear with me. I just wanted to pose a question. Do you think that God asks you to do anything that's futile, that is pointless, that doesn't, couldn't possibly happen? Does he ask you to pray for, for, for something that he won't answer? It's quite an interesting question and it's a huge question because I've been really struggling with one particular portion of scripture in the past few days. And that's um, Jesus' teaching in Matthew 5, where he specifically teaches about love for our enemies. You've heard the law that says, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, in that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. It's a really challenging bit of scripture that just every now and then um, we're faced with situations where we have to really look deep inside ourselves and take this to God and ask him to show us what that looks like and how we can put that into practice. I do trust Jesus to never ask me to do anything that's futile or pointless. I do trust him. And so I know when he commanded us to pray for our enemies, he did it because he knew that um, there was a reason for it, that it wasn't futile, it wasn't going to be a waste. I don't have to know how God works in another person's life before I pray for them. It's an interesting thought. You see, when it comes to somebody like President Putin, who... <sighs> I think we all have certain thoughts and feelings about him. I don't see him in the way that God sees him. I certainly don't see him at the moment in the way that God sees him, I'll have to be honest. But that's okay, because God knows. But I can pray for God to melt his heart. I can pray for God to open his eyes. I can pray to God to show him a better way. And then I can leave the rest to God. I can just leave it there. And I can continue to pour out my prayers for the people that are displaced and are facing this awful tragedy. And it's not only Putin. You know, this, this incorporates you know, other people in the world, um, leaders. It can even be people in our lives who we feel have set themselves up against us in one way or another, or we've, um, yeah, we might feel persecuted, whatever that circumstance is, it, circumstance is. I pray for road leaders. I don't want to have a hate-filled heart we do a lot to protect our hearts and we do a lot to protect our minds and the things that we say. I don't want a hate-filled heart 
because otherwise the enemy's really won. I don't want a vindictive spirit. I know how destructive they are. I refuse to harbour those feelings and I have refused to allow them to poison my attitude and my relationships with other people. And in other words, put me as a prisoner behind bars. So when Jesus asks us to pray for our enemies, what he's actually doing is he's asking us to do something that he knows will at the end of the day be good for us because he loves us. He wants us to, um, to live in peace, to have love-filled hearts. And if the only way that we can do that is by praying, then so be it. It's a tough one and it's one that I'm still struggling with because I find it very emotional having to pray with somebody who is causing so much hurt and so much destruction. But as we've always said all along, we know on whose side we are and we know who wins in the end. Have a good, wonderful and blessed day.